Hello, this is New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komdisha. For residents in the Albertine Graben area, the discovery of oil in their area has offered them an opportunity for employment and fast development, but at what cost have these come? New Vision TV examines the issues that have come with the discovery and exploration of oil. <laughs> After the discovery and exploitation of oil, water sources have been constructed for the communities, wiping away the burden of trekking for it. The 6.9 km road around the oil fields and its Atachi infield roads is another landmark infrastructure that has resulted from oil works. Residents have become regular suppliers of foodstuffs and labor to the project, which has earned them an income. They pay me well, I got money, and right now uh, I've already built my house as you are looking here. And I have my land somewhere. Three and thirty acres. Big employment opportunities are expected from multiple projects such as refineries and international airport, among others that are being constructed prior to the oil extraction. The contractor for the airport, that is SBA and Colas, are already on site doing actual work, doing some work. Uh, so we think we are really moving in terms of trying to ensure that we put in place the required infrastructure to support uh, production and the uh, actual production of, of, of our oil. Other residents are in jubilation after CNOOC, one of the contractors, constructed houses for some residents in compensation. <laughs> But it's not entirely well. A cloud of uncertainty hovers above the community. 7,000 individuals in Kamali Busiruka, Hoima district, were also evicted to pave way for the construction of an oil refinery and an international airport, among other developments. The position of this land is being concluded. As you can see, as we moved around the land, uh, the people whom we compensated already vacated. Uh, those who opted for resettlement, we completed the construction of the houses and uh, some of them have moved into the houses. The 7,000 people from three villages were offered the choice between compensation and resettlement, where some residents have been compensated and moved to new settlements. Some have still not received any compensation. Some of those who opted for compensation later rejected the offer after they discovered their properties had been undervalued. The ministry, however, took community projects like schools and health centers on the positive. I mean, the land acquisition process affects uh, many people, not only those who are directly affected in terms of their land being taken for the project, but also the communities around are actually, in one way or the other, actually affected. That is why these kind of interventions like health centers, schools, are called community uh, development projects. You're trying to ensure that the project benefits the entire community, not only the directly affected people. There is another problem. The residents say the so-called big people, some with connection in government, foresaw the infrastructure and either bought the community land or forged land titles. <laughs> They were notified that the land on which their home sit belongs to some senior government official. <laughs> The residents are now seeking intervention from government. Our government, ngabwe yatu yamba, etu yambi de dara kubanga wantu, abagaga watu libubi. 
with the public fear that they might lose the fight for their land. Oil works nonetheless go on with the first oil expected in 2020. For now, as the evicted people wait, what will befall them? This report was compiled by Edward Muhumuza for New Vision TV. Moving on, state attorney Rachel Nawira is on Friday expected to persuade court not to hold a treason case against the former Forum for Democratic Change presidential candidate Dr. Chiza Besije. The Nakawa Grade 1 magistrate Noah Sajabi directed Nawira to make a response to the submissions of Besije's lawyer on Friday. Besije is being represented by Anes Kalibala. Last week, Kalibala requested court to hold the treason case proceedings against Besje pending determination of his constitutional petition. At the constitutional court, Besje is, among others, challenging the process of being required to appear in the magistrate's court without being committed to the high court for trial. His case has so far lasted a year and 10 months in court. And now, Walker Ayeni is a man on a mission. Like his first name suggests, Ayeni has been working to create awareness about the importance of climate change. Ayeni walked 320 kilometers from Kampala to Kapchora. He walked as he spread a message about the plight of climate change and inspired people to take action against the changing climatic conditions. He said tree planting was one of the interventions that could be taken up by people. After conquering eastern Uganda, Ayeni is now spreading his tentacles to parts of western Uganda by walking from Kampala to Kasese via Fort Portal starting March 14th. His new target is to walk 370 kilometers in the coming 10 days and also encourages people to plant a million trees. Climate change causes global warming, disrupting rainfall patterns and also melting the ice on mountain tops like the Rosary Mountain. In sports news, no one could imagine the tactical move Bull FC head coach Kefa Kisala made in the second half that saw Faizo Muledu stay on the pitch as he scored a late winner after 87 minutes that saw his side win 3-2 against a determined police FC in a five-goal thriller at Kachindu Stadium. Bull FC drew the first blood when Richard Wandiaka scored from a sport kick after three minutes, but the visitors responded three minutes later. Bull FC pulled one back after nine minutes through Douglas Owori, who capitalized on police FC's poor defending. In the second half through, Ben Ochen leveled the score with a neat tap in after a cross from a second half substitute, Agri Madoy, after 52 minutes. Kisala brought in Congolese born Pierre Muhindo, who crossed in for Muledu to tap home the winner after a gold month scramble. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at Mount Elgon National Park. Mount Elgon National Park is found in Uganda near the border with Kenya. The national park covers the lower area of Mount Elgon, which was formed after a volcanic eruption. Hiking, trekking, camping are some of the activities one can indulge in while at Mount Elgon National Park. Take a look. Mountain Elgon National Park lies on the slopes of Mountain Elgon. The mountain is found in the eastern part of Uganda and it is said to first erupted more than 24 million years ago. The Bagisu and the Sabine are the two ethnic tribes that reach by most parts across the mountain. Mountain Elgo National Park harbors various animals and known for getting plants that bring life to the slopes of Mountain Elgon. It supports a rich variety of altitude unit vegetation zones that range from Rush Montana mixed bamboo belt to mention but a few. The main tourist attraction here is hiking, as hikers engage with the spectacular scenery, striving to reach the mountain's highest peak, known as Wagagai. 
the Elgon area has nine base campsites to offer. They are located at strategic points along the trekking routes. While at the park, you cannot miss seeing the unique CP waterfalls and an ancient enormous Stone Age cave painting. However, for more Pile of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures, so get your copy every Sunday for Pile of Africa stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komdisha.